Today we're going to learn how to set up a new project when we want to create a website and we're also going to learn how to set up our first page inside the website. So before we get started on the actual tutorial, because of feedback from the last video I decided that we're going to use a different editor called Adam for these tutorials. Now I decided on this to avoid there being any kind of misunderstandings or confusion from any of you in terms of the colors or features in the editor that I personally use. Sublime Text, which was mentioned in the previous episode, cost about $70. And since not everyone has that to spare, I will be using Atom because it's free and nearly identical to Sublime Text, but without the annoying pop-ups that you get if you do not have the full version. It is important to me that you guys are able to follow my lessons in the best way possible so that you can get the most out of your lessons and that includes in my mind that we use an editor that everyone can afford. So if you download the Sublime Text or bought it in the previous episode, just go ahead and stick with it. Like I said in the previous episode, the editors don't really matter when it comes to creating websites. You can create websites inside any kind of editor. So just to make sure everyone can follow these lessons, I'm going to be using Adam for these tutorials. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and get started on creating a new web project. So as you guys can see, I'm inside Atom, which is the text editor. And when I want to create a new website, like I mentioned in the previous episode, we need to create a new folder inside our computer somewhere. Now in my case, I'm just gonna go to my desktop. I'm gonna right click, and then I'm gonna go ahead and go to new, and then new folder. Now this folder, we can call any kind of name. I want to call mine root folder, since that's a technical term when it comes to a website folder. So we're going to say root folder. Again, you can call it your website name if you want to. Like in my case, I have a website called mmtoots, so I could call it mmtoots if I wanted to. So inside this folder is where we're going to insert all the different documents and images and videos or any kind of media we might want to insert inside our website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up my text editor, which is Adam. And as you guys can see with Adam, when we open up the first time, we will get a bunch of windows that we don't actually need. So I'm going to go ahead and close some of them. So I'm going to go ahead and close the welcome tag over here. I'm going to close the telemetry consent which is over here, I'm going to close the welcome guide. So we only have the untitled page inside the editor. Now, if you accidentally close the untitled page, you can go and create a new one by going to file and then say new file. So inside this file, we're going to insert the code, which will end up being inside our front page of our website. So this file here is going to be the actual page that we see inside the browser when you enter the website for the first time. Now, the first thing we want to do is actually save the file. So I'm going to click Control S or go to file and then save as. And I'm going to save it inside my desktop folder called root folder. So we need to make sure we insert all documents inside this folder called root folder. Now, inside this folder, I'm going to name this file index.html. And it's very important that you call it index.html. If you were to go ahead and call it something like page.html or frontpage.html or home.html, then it's not going to work. You need to call it index.html because that's the way the server, when we do actually upload the website online, can actually figure out which file is your front page. So we need to call it index.html. I'm going to save it. And then as you guys can see, we now get a project window on the left side and we still have the file over here on the right side. Now inside the project window, we can actually see all the documents you have inside the root folder. And this is one of the features that Adam provides as well as Sublime Text, where you can actually see the documents inside the root folder. So you can just open them up directly inside the side window here. Now, if you want to close the side window, you can click the arrow here and it does in fact close. Now, if you want to open it again, you just click the, the arrow once more. So the first thing we need to do inside the index file is actually tell the browser that this is in fact a HTML document. Now you might be thinking that because we wrote .html inside the name that the browser should know that this is a HTML file, but we do need to include some HTML tags inside the document in order for the browser to know that this is a HTML file. Now just to show you guys a couple of examples of HTML tags. This right here is an opening tag and a closing tag inside HTML. And again, the name inside the actual tags will tell the browser what kind of content we'd write inside in between the tags. So if we were to create something like a nav tag, then we tell the browser that inside these nav tags, we have a navigation, okay? So we use HTML tags in order to define what kind of content goes in between the tags. 
And this is just a way for the browser to know what kind of content we have inside the website. So the first thing we need to do, like I said, is actually tell the browser that we're inside an HTML file. And the way we do that is by creating a tag that looks like this, lesser than, exclamation mark, doc type, space, HTML, lesser than. So this right here is a sort of special tag because like you guys can see, we're not including any kind of closing tag afterwards. We're just defining at the very top of the document that this is a HTML file and not just any kind of HTML file, but the way we wrote it here actually tells the browser that this is a HTML5 document, which is the latest version of HTML. So after telling the browser that we're using HTML5 inside this document, we're going to tell the browser when the HTML needs to start and when it needs to stop. So we're going to create a pair of HTML tags that will have all the content of the page inside of it. So we're going to say lesser than HTML greater than, then we're going to go to the next line, a couple of lines down. I'm going to say lesser than forward slash HTML greater than. So now as you guys can see, when we want to close off the HTML tag, we just include a forward slash in front of the actual name of the tag. So any kind of content we put inside these tags will actually be content inside this HTML file. So inside an HTML document, we have two typical tags that all the content needs to be inside of inside the actual HTML tags are created. Now these tags are called a head and a body tag. Now inside the head tag, we're going to include stuff that we don't actually visibly see inside the browser, such as if we want to link to another document or, or we want to define something called meta tags, which is just information about the website that we don't actually see inside the website. And then we insert them inside the head tag. Now inside the body tag, we insert content that we do actually see inside the website, such as images, text, headers, navigations, that sort of thing. All those things we put inside the body tag. Now, just to show you guys a shortcut inside Atom and Sublime Text, if you were to write head and then click tap, then you guys can see we create the tags fast and we don't actually need to write the opening and the closing tag manually, which is quite nice inside these programs here. So I'm gonna go underneath the head tags and I'm going to write body, tap, and then we have these tags as well. So like I mentioned, inside the body tags, we can include content that we do actually see inside the website. So in our example here, we're going to write hello world, which is sort of a tradition when it comes to writing code inside any kind of application. So when you create your first application, we can write hello world. Now inside the head tags, like I said, we don't actually see the content, but we do need to have some information in here, which is necessary in order for the website to have the proper information that it needs in order to run inside the browser. So the first thing we need to include is something called a meta tag. Now a meta tag, like I explained, is a tag that has some information in it. And in this case, we're going to include some information about what type of characters we want to use inside the website. And the way we do that is by writing lesser than meta and then the closing tag. Now this is a meta tag, but right now we haven't actually included any kind of information inside this meta tag. So I'm going to go right after the name of the tag, say space, and then I'm going to write charge set is equal to double quotes. Then I'm going to say UTF dash eight which basically covers all the characters we want to use inside any kind of typical website. So what we just did here is we included a name for the tag, then we included something called an attribute, which gives some information about the tag, which in this case is the character set we want to use inside the website, which is equal to some kind of value, okay? So this is all we need in order to tell the browser that we want to use a specific set of characters inside the website. Now, the next thing we're going to include inside the head tags, which I'm going to include right above the meta tag, is going to be a title tag. Now, the title tag will in fact have an opening and closing tag. And just so you guys don't get confused, the meta tag did not include a closing tag for. And if you were to ask me about which tags do we or do we not include a closing tag for, then I can just tell you that it's something you have to learn along the way because not all tags like the top up here or the meta tag will need a closing tag. So it's just one of those things that you will learn along the way as you start programming, okay? So on top of the meta tag, I'm going to include a title tag. So I'm going to say title and then click tap. And then as you guys can see, we get a pair of tags with some text inside of it. Now right now it says home as a default when we did actually click tap. So I'm just going to delete it and instead write the name of my website. So in this case, I could actually say something like hello world, just to have it, save it. 
And all these tags we just included here are going to be the default ones that we need to have every time we start up a new page inside our website. Now, just to kind of test this out, because we haven't actually seen the page inside the browser, if I were to go to my root folder, then right click my index file, go to open with, and then open it with any kind of browser we might have inside our computer. And I'm just gonna use Google Chrome here because that's the one I prefer to use. So once I open it, you guys will notice that we will have a piece of text that says hello world. And inside the tab up here in the top part, we also have hello world. Now the hello world we included up here in the tab is going to be what we wrote inside the title here. And the text that is inside the actual website right here is going to be the text we have down here inside the body tag. Okay, so this is basically how we get started on creating a new website. In the next episode, we're going to talk about some different tags we have inside HTML. So right now we learned about some couple of default ones that we needed to have in every single project or inside every single document. So we're going to talk about some tags that we will be using along the way as we start creating a website. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.